Scripture, a beautiful psalm written by David. And Psalm 84 says, How lovely is your dwelling place, O Lord God Almighty. My soul yearns and even faints for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh, they cry out for the living God. Even the sparrow has found a home and a swallow a nest for herself where she may have her young, a place near your altar. O Lord Almighty, my King and my God, blessed are those who dwell in your house. They are even praising you. Blessed are those whose strength is in you, who have set their hearts on pilgrimage. And as they pass through the valley of Vaca, they make it a place of springs. The autumn rain is also covered with pools. They go from strength to strength till each appears before God in Zion. Hear my prayer, O Lord God Almighty. Listen to me, O God of Jacob. Look upon our shield, O God. Look with favor on your anointed one. And this is the verse that we're going to focus our sermon today. Better is one day in your courts than a thousand elsewhere. I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God. I'd rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than dwell in the tents of the wicked. Psalm 84, 10. See, something that David happened to understand when he wrote this psalm is that David had experienced so many things throughout his life. He had experienced victory. He had experienced defeat. He had experienced love. He had experienced loneliness. He had experienced anointing. He had also experienced depression. He had experienced the greatest of moments where he is at the top of the mountain. And he's also hidden in the deepest of caves away from his enemies. He has had the love of a family. And he's also slept with another man's woman. He has been blessed with children, and he also has lost children. He has lived in the unity of a kingdom, while his house is falling apart in rebellion. And yet, through all this, David says, I would trade it all in. I would trade everything that I've been through in my life. For I understand that now, at this point, that every debt, every fault, Every broken heart that I had to go through in my life was to make sure I fit in the right place. To make sure I fit in the right moment that God called me for. I fit in the right situation for it is God who has placed me here. It is God who has put me through these paces. And sometimes, even though I get mad for the people he takes away, it's because he's preparing me for something better that is yet to come. So I'd rather spend one day in his courts than a thousand elsewhere. Better than a thousand days of receiving the welcome of a hero when I come back from the victory of the battlefield. I'd rather spend one day in the courts of the Lord than having people praise me and my name be known throughout the land. I'd rather spend one day in the courts of God than taking care of sheep in the field. I'd rather spend one day in the courts of God than writing all the psalms and songs that I could ever write in all of my life. Because when I am in the courts of the Lord, he says, I would rather be a doorkeeper. When you are a doorkeeper, you make sure you know who comes and who goes by that door. Another point, another way of saying is, you have an access point to see what comes and goes. And there is no better place for you and me to have access to the door of the Lord. There is no better place for you and me to have access to the throne of God. To come into his courts and come before his throne boldly. And not ashamed of who I am. 
Not come as a slave. Not come as a sinner. Not come as one who is less than worthy. But come one that has been washed by the blood of the Lamb. One that is known as God is my Father. And I have an access point. That I don't have to make an appointment. I don't have to schedule it. I don't want to have to wait for a festival. I don't have to wait for a certain season. I don't have to wait till I have enough money to give a love offering. I have an access point to my God. He has set me in his door. He has set me in a place. And if I am set in the right place at the right time, at the right moment, there is no devil, no demon, no strongman that can ever bring me down. There is no disease. There is no problem. There is no issue that can take away my joy. Because as soon as the devil tells me I can't do it, I turn around and say, there is an open door. There is my God. There is my availability. There is my answer. There is my help. Because I am at the door. I am there at the place uh, where I have access. For you see, when you have access, you have something better than any blessing. When you have access, you have greater than any more money in the bank. Because you have something called favor. You have favor of God. If God is our answer and God lives inside of you and me, you need to say to God, instead of answering my problem, instead of just giving me a healing God, instead of just coming to you, Lord, for me to look for another favor, you need to say, God, put me in a place where I am an answer. Put me in a place where people need of me. Put me in a place where everybody else who says it's not my problem. When everybody else says it's not my issue. When everybody else says it's not my kid. When everybody else says it's not my job to do that. And say, Lord, make me an answer. Make me an access point for people who can't go past that point in their lives for people who feel like they're going to give up for people that feel that the pills are not working for people who feel that they can't make it another day god make me an answer make me an access to them so the same way i have access to you i may show them and say i may not be the exact answer for your life but i can point you in the right direction i can show you this god this god that can make anything and everything work in your favor for too long, we have believed that happiness is by what we have. Happiness is by how many cars you got in your garage. Happiness is by the amount of money you make or the kind of husband or wife that you have. Or how successful your children happen to be. Or how much money you have in your bank account when you retire. But David said, uh-uh, that is all good and plenty. But this is what I mean in my heart. He says, these are the decisive words of my heart. I have been through everything. I have been in a home where my father was ashamed to bring me before the prophet. I was in a place that I was treated just like any other simple servant and made to go look after the sheep. But I also been in places where God has sent for me. I have been in places where I at least did not expect and yet God saw me throughout what I was going through. He saw that my praise was honest. He saw that my worship was more than worthy. He saw me in places where everybody had forgotten about me and yet my loving God, my heavenly Father, the one that knows me by my name, that even before I was created in my mother's womb, He knew of me. He knew of my steps. He knew of my faults. He knew of my strength and He knew of my weaknesses and he has sent for me i'm here to tell somebody today that god is sending someone to get you somebody sending god is someone to get you for where you have been forgotten maybe you have been forgotten because of your skills maybe somebody has forgotten you because you're just involved in too many problems but god is saying we will not sit we will not rest we will not keep quiet till we send for the one God is looking for today. We will send for that answer. God is not going to rest. Your enemies are going to stand in shame because God is sending for you. He is sending for you. Whether you're in the field, He's sending for you. Whether you're in the prison, He is sending for you. Whether you're in the hospital, He is sending for you. God is sending for you today because you are the answer. To the problem that people don't even understand they're going through. Instead of saying, God bless me. 
Say, God, make me an answer to a problem. Because when I am an answer to a problem, people look for me. People send for me. People see me for who I am. You don't need to understand that the Pharaoh did not know Joseph for who he was. He did not know that he was the son of a slave. He did not know that he was the son of Jacob. He did not know that his brothers had betrayed him. He did not know that he had been sold to the Midianites. He did not know that he had run Potiphar's house. He did not know that he had been falsely convicted of being unfaithful to his master. What he did know is that there was a famine. And if he did not find an answer to that famine, it did not matter if Joseph was the answer. Joseph was going to die in the prison just like all the Egyptians were going to die in the famine. But God made Pharaoh know that there is an answer. And when God makes you an answer, he can pull you out of a prison. When God makes you an answer, he can make you interpret dreams that you never dreamt. When God makes you an answer, you are in control of many things that you never even imagined you could ever be in control of. You need to say, God, make me an answer today. I need to know, Lord, that there's so many people out there. There's so many situations that need to be resolved. Make me the answer. Make me the answer. You need to be aware that only because you're an answer doesn't mean you're going to be an answer forever. You need to say, Lord, put me in the right place at the right time at the right season. So that I don't see myself by how other people see me. I see myself by how you see me, oh God. Whether I am called to serve my brothers like David was in the battlefield. And he saw the giant. And he said, God, make me an answer in this situation. You need to say, Lord, make me an answer today. When you are a believer in Christ Jesus, you know there is no higher joy than God. No amount of surplus, no amount of jobs, no amount of degrees from a, from a university or a college are more than enough, more than powerful, more than wealthy that can compete for who God is. You need to see that God is what the world has been waiting for. You need to understand that there's no amount of money that can purchase what God can mean for you. There's nothing you could ever trade that could ever amount to what God is. No matter how deep of a problem you need to know that God is always there for you and me. David had been through it all. Had been through the loneliest of loneliest moments. Through the most miserable of miserable situations. Moments when his life was in danger. Moments when even the king had thrown a spear at his head. He had been of moments that he had not slept all night long. And there had been moments when his success had grown so much overnight. That the king was jealous of his success. But he had also been a murderer. He had also lost a child. He had also had threats to the throne. He had also been persecuted. He had been ridiculed. And yet he writes, I'd rather be one day in your court. So God. When we come to church. When we come to praise. We come. Because we'd rather be here than anywhere else. I could be anywhere else at this moment, but nothing can ever take the place of God. You need to understand that even though sometimes when you and I are away on a Sunday, I look at the clock when it says 11 o'clock and I have a moment where I say, God, I need to pray. Because even though I am not in church, I am missing that fellowship. I am missing that moment with you, God. Even though there is times that I've been taken away because I have to spend time with my family, away on vacation. Maybe you're traveling. Maybe you're working. I'm not here to tell you how you should spend your time. But I know in my heart that when I see 11 o'clock on Sunday, I'm not in church. I have a moment that I need to pause and say, God, thank you. Thank you, God. Because you do so much for me that the least I can do is remember you. I remember you for who you are and how great you are in my life. How you provide for all of us and keep us all safe. How you look after our family. How you keep us away from danger, God. How you keep providing in times where I even forget to thank you for the things you provided for me. And so, Lord, I thank you. Because the greatest gift that we could ever receive is 
the gift of God. God is better than anything that the world has to offer. And we need to understand that the Bible, when it reveals God's plans for you and me, it always has a brighter future. It always has a better ending. It always shows, no matter what the circumstance, no matter the obstacle, the gospel of Jesus Christ shows us that we will win at the end, that we will be victorious, that our God is not going to lose. But if in anything, the Bible says that every knee shall bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is the Lord. He will bring down the evil in this world. He will destroy all the weapons that are found in this earth. And he will bring a new heaven and a new earth. And he will reign forever and ever. As Christians, we need to understand that God is better than anything that God can ever offer you. God is better than anything that God can offer you. What do you mean by that, preacher? That God is bigger than any gift he could give you. God is bigger than any blessing he can give you. Because God, just by being God, is more than enough. The fact that he is God, he suspends the stars in the right place. The fact that he is God, he makes the earth rotate on its axis. The fact that he is God, he keeps the winds and the waves from crashing into all over the world. The fact that he is God, he makes the sun rise up and go back to sleep. Because the fact that he is God, we have more than enough oxygen to breathe. The fact that he is God, he controls everything that is happening in this world and in the world that we cannot see. More than any blessing, more than than any gift, more than anything that we could ask for. The fact that God is God is more than enough. The fact that we are saved is more than enough. I need to tell you something today and it may come to a shock for you. There are people in this church that read the Bible more than I do. There are people in this church that pray more than I do. But they are not less blessed by God just because you don't see material things. We got to get away from that mentality that if you give more to God, he's just going to give you more back. We got to wait, wait, get up from the mentality and wake up from the mentality that if I shout five amens and do six hallelujah dances, that God is going to give me something. You need to understand that God blesses us in ways that money cannot do. God blesses us in ways that our eyes cannot see. God blesses us in ways that even though it may not reflect in our bank account, there are some blessed people that come to church and they're not afraid to say, God, thank you. I praise you. I praise you. I thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Son. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you for what you are in my life. For too long, we have compared God to what we see with our naked eyes. But that's not what faith is. Faith is evidence of things unseen. Things that are yet happening. Things that are happening behind the curtains. Things that are happening behind the scenes that we don't have access to. But one day we will see fully. One day we will fully understand that this craziness that we're going through. That this hectic moments. These moments that were so painful and lonely. God meant them for a greater purpose. You need to understand that when you see yourself as an answer. God will always pull you out. But when people see you as a problem. They will always push you back down. That's what happened with Joseph. His brother saw him as a problem. And they put him in a pit. But there came the Midianites. And they saw this boy inside of a cave and said uh uh we can make money off this boy this boy is an answer to us and when they put him up on an auction to be sold as a slave Potiphar saw Joseph as an answer in his life you need to understand that when you are an answer people will always promote you but when people see you as a problem they will always 
demote you. They will always put you down. But you don't need to live your life by what other people think of you. You don't need to live your life walking on eggshells trying to please everybody. You need to say, God, as long as I am an answer to you, as long as you send me where you need to send me, Lord, even if I go in the deepest of hell, there you are. Even if I go in the worst of places, there I know that you can pull me out because when I am an answer, there is no door that can be shut. There is no rock that can keep me inside a grave. Even if Jesus wrote or rose on the third day and is seated on the right hand of the Father and he said, I will do much greater things than what he has done, then I can do all things in Christ Jesus who strengthens me. Hallelujah. We have gifts and when you have access you have access to a lot of things of god you need to understand that your father's house is filled with so many things that you could ever do to improve your life in the same way you would go into a mall and you could somebody could ever say to you you can buy whatever you want in this mall there are millions of things that you are there that you have access to that even though you don't need them today tomorrow you might need them in the same way when you go into your father's house you need to understand that you have a key that unlocks things in your in, in, that you need in your life you have key access to things that will unlock blessing in your children's lives you have keys that will increase the access of the blessing of God in your life you have keys that will increase the anointing that you need in that moment in Ephesians chapter 1 verse 3 we read the following Ephesians chapter 1 verse 3 praise be to the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who has blessed us in the heavenly realms with every spiritual blessing in Christ you have blessings in Christ that you did not even know you had access to they're found not in earthly not in earthly uh, warehouses, but he says they are in heavenly realms. There are places that you need to access and reach out to God and say, God, give me what I need at this moment. Give me what you think I need at this moment, Lord. I come to you not because I need a view, but I, because, Lord, I want you to open up something in my life. That even though I'm going through a terrible period right now, even though I'm going through a terrible moment, make me learn from this situation. Make me understand what I'm going through. Because sometimes there are times that I do need to be humbled. There are times where my pride gets the best of me. There are times where I need to be told to shush and stand and be quiet for the presence of the Lord is here. I need to know, Father, what your step is in my life. I need to know that above everything, I have access to the forgiveness of my sins. That above all, I have relief from the wrath of God. That even though I was born in sin, the blood of Jesus breaks every hex. The blood of Jesus breaks down every curse. The blood of Jesus breaks down any generational, any genetic malfunction in my life. But the blood of Jesus breaks down any spoken word, any buried word, any sent word against me. That the blood of Jesus protects me from all enemies. That the blood of Jesus repels all stench of any devil or demon in my life. That the blood of Jesus washes away all my infirmities. That the blood of Jesus washes away all my iniquities and all my sins. As far as the east is from the west, that's how much God has separated you away from your sin. That is one of the greatest gifts you could ever have you be the fact that God forgives you if you come and honestly ask for his forgiveness and we will be with him in heaven forever we will have a glorified body no more a body that breaks down no more a body that goes through these pains and aches no more a body that feels the anguish and the depression that we sometimes feel 
but because we are on Jesus Christ. We are more than conquerors. The best gift that you could ever give somebody is the gospel of Jesus Christ. You need to tell them that a God is above it all. That whatever you're going through, whatever the situation, He speaks all cultures. He is relevant to all people. He is still in the moment. He's still in style. And even though the Bible says, heaven and earth shall pass, but my word shall not pass. God is the answer to all of our needs. And you and I have access, not because somebody killed a bull, not because somebody killed a dove, not because somebody killed a lamb or put a scapegoat away from the, from, from, from the village. But no, you have access because the right hand of God, God's only begotten son, came and died for you and me. No matter how much we would turn our backs on him, how many times we would deny him, how many times we would insult him and question his wisdom, God sent his only begotten son that he would live and die with us, that he would live and suffer with us, that he would live and walk and feel our shame. And because of him, we have an access. We have ability, availability to walk through that door and know that our God is more than enough. When I grew up as a young person, the message of the Bible was, you are a sinner, hell is hot, and the only way to get out of hell is to believe in Jesus. And it was either believe in God or you're going to hell. It's true. It is true. But it also falls short of showing us the beauty of Christ. That I need of God, not because I don't want to burn in hell, it's because I need a Christ. Because he created a world for me to succeed in. Amen. It's not about what's going to happen to me once I die. That I need to be focused on all the time. But I need to be aware that in this world. In this moment. In this environment. God is opening up ways. God is sending me blessings. God is keeping dangers away from me. God is shifting the right people into the right places for the right moment. God is sending blessings my way. God is sending favor my way. And if I just depend on God to keep me away from hell, then I only need of God just to do me a favor. But when I say, Lord, I rejoice in your presence every day. Lord, I need of you more and more. Lord, I want to develop a relationship with you. That I came to know you. Not because I want to get away from hell. But because I want to experience heaven with you, Lord. When I learn to understand that I came to be saved. Not because I felt guilty. But because I realized that it is better to be in his court for one day than a thousand elsewhere. Then I realize that there are many more blessings that can open up to me. There are many more things that are more available to me. When I open up my mind and realize I am not here because I am afraid of dying today. You know, that was the famous line that they used back when I was young. If you were to die tonight. Do you know for a fact that you're going to heaven or you're going to hell? Well, let me tell you, if I were to die tonight, there is no better place to be than the presence of God. I need to be in his presence, whether I'm alive or dead, whether a bus hits me and I'm stuck in a hospital in a coma. I need to be in the presence of my God. Hallelujah. How would you feel? That if you were to marry somebody and they told you one day after you guys got married that the only reason they married you is because they were afraid to be single forever. Or the only reason they married you is because you could provide them money. Or the only reason they married you is because they thought you guys could have beautiful children together. And you wondered to yourself, well, what about me? Do you not love me for who I am? Do you not love me and be in my presence? That when we sit down and have dinner together, do you not enjoy my company? 
that when we sit down and watch TV together, do you not feel at peace in our own home? Do you not feel that? Imagine how God feels when we only say, God, I need you to get me out of this problem. When we say, God, I need you just because I need you to uh, cure me from this disease. If that is the way that we would feel if our own spouse and even sometimes our own children make us feel like that. That the only reason they love us is because we give them things. And sometimes we need to remind them, just like the brother of the prodigal son. I love you just as much as your brother. You have had access to everything in my father's house. But not once have I heard you tell me that you love me. Not once have I heard you say that you're thankful for the things that I've done. Because even though the prodigal son left the father's house and he ashamed his father, he brought shame to the house and he came back ashamed of what he had done. There is no greater sin and grief for a parent to also have a child in the house that it continues to be ungrateful and looks down at the mistakes of others when they don't even give you love and affection. At least a part of the son left. But sometimes we're dealing with the brothers and sisters of those prodigal children who never leave, but are always complaining. That will never leave, but are always thinking in their heart, at least I'm not doing what they're doing. At least I don't sin like they sin. I don't, at least I don't make their mistakes. You need to understand, we're all sinners. We all have fallen short of the glory of God. And we need to rejoice in the presence of the house of our Father no matter what. No matter what He does. No matter how He provides. We cannot question His wisdom. We cannot question His guidance. And though, even though it's hard as humans to say, Lord, I trust you completely. To give everything over to you. There are moments that we are really wondering. God is this really how those things are supposed to work out? But yet God. Through his love for us. Continues to answer. Continues to provide. Continues to be God. Whether you love him or not. God is love, God, no matter whether you come to church or not. God continues to be God, whether you want to give an offering or not. God continues to be God, whether you want to come and come to church on a regular basis or not. You need to understand that the reason why God created you and me is not that we would complain. Is that we would worship Him. And when we begin to be worshipers in spirit and truth, He begins to unlock things. When we start seeking God for who He is and for the amazing things that He is for all of us. The more that He begins to dwell amongst us and reveal more things and speak truth into our life. Speak healing into our lives. Lord, say, Lord, speak into me. Lord, fill this vessel that all this pain that I'm going through, all these aches, all these things that keep tormenting in me, Lord, speak into me life. Speak into me healing. Speak into me deliverance, Father. Speak into me, Father. Speak what I need to hear. Speak the words that sometimes I feel that I should not hear, but you need to speak me that truth, Lord. That you need to rebuke me when I need to be rebuked. You need to praise me when I need to be praised. But no matter what, Lord, I need to follow you in your steps. For too long we have believed that prosperity equals favor. That prosperity equals new cars. That prosperity equals houses. And you know, if people just believed a little harder, you could get what everybody else has. But sometimes we don't have eyes to see that the problem with seeing things this way is that we believe that God just promotes those that only do things for God. You need to keep aware that God's prosperity doesn't rely on how much faithful you are to Him. God's prosperity relies on those that seek of Him no matter what they're going through. Through the valleys, through the mountains, through the moments of famine and the moments of plenty. I will serve the Lord for me and my family. We shall serve the Lord. Whether there's times that we have home and there's times where we don't have much. 
You know, we have come to a point in time that we want things to be done for us. That we want people to drive us to church. We need people to pick us up and even put messages up on the internet so that we will listen to the sermon. But what happened to those days that we used to wait on the bus? We had to wait an hour before church at the bus stop. We had to make sure we had enough change to get on the bus. No matter what the weather, whether it was sunny, rain, cold, hot, we would wait on the bus to make sure that we got to church on time. And once we got to church, there was no better place to be than in the house of the Lord. But we have to change that mentality this me first mentality where everything comes about me 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 but when I think about me I begin to realize that I have so many shortcomings when I think about me I realize how many mistakes I have made when I really focus about me I realize how imperfect I am and so I turn to my God and say Lord I need to be more disciplined and be more focused on you. I need to be more disciplined. By laying my life at the altar God. I need to be more thankful. For the things that you do. For the things that I see. And the things that I'm not aware. For the things that are revealed. And the things that are unseen in my life Lord. The things that you are doing. And the things that you are not doing. Because it's not the right moment. And not the right season. But I need to get away from that mentality. The prosperity means means I'm more spiritual. The prosperity means that I'm more favored. You and I need to understand that our God loves us all equally. And that He has blessings that only are meant for you. That only you are the key. That you have the only digital fingerprint that can unlock that situation. If your own fingerprint can unlock your phone, imagine how much more your own digital spiritual fingerprint can unlock a blessing of God in your life. There are things that are only meant for your eyes to see in a certain time, in a certain period and you will know that only God could do it because only God can answer the way he has answered in your life so what do we do what do we do with this information that we have God as the greatest gift well if God is the greatest gift and his greatest gift is Jesus and the reason why he sent Jesus to die for you and me is because we are the most valuable treasure in Christ Jesus. How much more will heaven be more amazing that we will all be gathered together praising the name of God. Jesus is the center's peace. Jesus is the tree of life. Jesus is that door. Jesus is the good shepherd. He is the bread of life. He is the way, the truth, and the life. And there's no other way to the Father except through Him. And that's why David said, I'd rather be in your courts than a thousand elsewhere. I would want to be your doorkeeper. So you need to understand that joy is more than just a location. Joy is not found in Orlando, Florida, in a place called Disney World. You need to understand that you and I can experience joy even in a hospital waiting room. That you and I can experience joy even at the place where somebody's being buried at a cemetery. To know that in our hearts that they will see them once again when we get to heaven. Joy is, a, is more than just a feeling, but it's a state of worship, a state of thankfulness. That no matter where I am, no matter where I find myself in, and no matter what the news comes to my heart, I will find joy. I will find peace. I will find what I need to know in Christ Jesus. Because more greater than hope and joy, the Bible says, the greatest of these is love. <laughs> when I love my Savior, when I love my God, there is nothing that can sway me from him. There's nothing that can distract me from who he is in my life. We must have God the same way that you and I breathe oxygen. We must truly love him more than even we love our children and our, and our, and our, and our partners. 
Because anything else without God is never the same. Everything you buy, any vacation, anything that you treasure, I don't even care if you buy it at the dollar store. It will not have the same effect if you don't have God in your life. Because He is the center of it all. Because when He is the center, He sweetens everything that we do. When He is the center of our worship, we could only have four people here singing, but it could be the greatest worship experience ever. Because when God is the center, everything else is better. So, as we conclude, where would you rather be today? Where would you rather find yourselves? Would you rather find yourself in the home of a lover? Would you rather find yourself in a bank account that has over a million dollars? Would you rather find yourself where you are the MVP of a game? Where would you rather find yourself at this moment? The greatest thing I find about the writing of this psalm is that it's Ray David that wrote it. This was not a man that was born in, in riches. This was not a man that had the favor of his father. This was not a man that had everything given to him. If anything, he felt what you and I felt. He went through what you and I had to go through. He was uh, sometimes brought to shame by the people that he loved. The, the, he loved so dearly and loved so much because he trusted them. And yet, David says, a day in your courts is a better than a thousand, I swear. I'd rather be a doorkeeper. I'd rather sleep outside the door and sleep on a mat than sleep in the most comfiest of beds of kingdoms. I'd rather be outside in the elements waiting for the door to open than to be anywhere experiencing all the riches of this world because greater than being a believer is having access to my father because I know that in my house there there is more than I could ever imagine being in my father's house it is the place where I feel the most at peace being in my father's house that's where all my pain goes away when I am in my father's house there is no worry that can take away what's in my heart of thankfulness when I'm in my father's house all these moments of joy come back into me when I smell my father's house it is a certain way of knowing that I am home when I am in my father's house and I touch him and he touches me I know I am where the one who made me I am the place with the one who controls my life I am in the place that the one that will not hurt me or torment me but when I am in my father's house I I experience freedom when I'm in my father's house I experience joy when I'm in my father's house I experience love when I'm in my father's house I experience acceptance when I'm in my father's house all worry all depression all anxiety goes away when we are in our father's house uh, I'd rather be in the door of my father's house uh, having access to his blessing having access to the gift having access to the revelation of his word having access to what he will do in my life in the life of my children and my children's children I need to be at the door of my father's house. So as we enter into this period of Christmas and everything that comes within this season, we need to be thankful for what our father did for you and me. For what he has done, he is doing and will continue to do. One of the things I realized Lately, I had a lot of work done at my house. And one of the things I realized that even the best drafted of plans, even the best laid pictures, when you put them up and do it in real life, things sometimes don't line up. Sometimes things don't match the way you thought they were gonna match. And sometimes things don't appear the way you thought they were going to appear. And when I seen the workers, the vendors, contractors come into the house, Sometimes they have to bend pieces. Sometimes they have to hit the pieces. And sometimes they even have to break pieces. 
in order for them to fit properly where they need to go. What are you trying to say, preacher? What I'm trying to tell you is there are moments in your lives where you have been folded. There are moments in your life where you have been broken. There are moments in your life that you feel like you've been hammered up and against you in your life. But God is going to use all those uneven pieces in your life to fit perfectly in the plan that he has laid in your life. No setback is not without a reason. No broken heart is not man without a purpose. Because God is putting you in the right place where a perfect peace will not match. But because you have been dented, because you have been broken, because you have been folded, amen, because you've been in the hands of the master, he will put you in the right place, in the right moment, in the right situation where nobody else could have fit. No one else better with a better life could have fit there. Nobody else could have, could have been a greater mother than what you could be for your kids. No one could love your children like the way you love your children. Even though you feel beaten. Even though you feel burdened. Even though you feel at times that you don't even want to get up and feed them. God is saying to you and me, I have bent you because I am the potter and you are my clay and I will perfect you in my hands. I will perfect you for my purpose. I will perfect you for my plans. And this is the word that somebody needs to hear today. Just because other people don't think I'm perfect. I am perfect in my father's hands. Only because other people don't love me. I have a father that loves me. And even though other people may not hire me. I have a God that blesses me no matter what I'm going through. Lord make me an answer. Lord make me an answer. No matter how many people push me down. Make me an answer. Because an answer. That only is an answer. When the people are bringing them up. But an answer cannot be an answer. When it is covered. God discovered me. God opened me up. God revealed myself to people. That need of me at this moment. Hallelujah. Don't let myself, don't let my self-esteem or my self-worth be measured by the people that are trying to push me away. Because people who are pushing you away are people who see you as a problem. God did not create you to be a problem. God created you to be an answer. And there will be a time where somebody is going to unlock the prison cell like they did with Joseph. And you know what Joseph did? The Bible says that Joseph saved himself. Joseph changed his own clothes. And Joseph presented himself with the Pharaoh. You need to hear this from God right now. When the door is unlocked and the king of kings calls for you, you need to save everything from the past. You need to save all that shame. You need to save all that embarrassment. You need to save anything that resembles a slave for the devil. Because when you go before the throne of God, you need to have a new look. You need to be a redeemer. Wash in the blood of Jesus. You are sanctified. You have been washed by the blood of the Lamb. And you need to present yourself like a favorable person before the king. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Joseph said, I can't look like a Hebrew. Joseph said, I can't look like a prisoner. I can't look like a slave no more. So every word of rejection from my father's house, I shave it off. Any word of rejection from my brothers, I shave it off. Any word that from Potiphar's house, I shave it off. Any word that I was called a slave by the Midianites, I shave it off. Because when I am in the presence of the king, I am free. I am free indeed. Because I am the answer to the famine that we're about to face. I thank God that God prepares me for famines. I thank God that there are strong men that God prepares me to bring them down. There are walls that need to be shouted down by my praise. There are waters that need to be separated by the guiding of the word of God in my life. There is manna from heaven that needs to be coming down for my family when I shout in the name of the Lord Jesus. You are the access to what your family needs. You are that focal point. You are that door. 
You are that gate. And that's why the devil's attacking you. That's why the devil's setting the negativity against you. Because he knows that if you shut you down, he can shut the door. That if he shuts you down and shuts down your praise, uh, the flow of God stops flowing. You need to tell the devil you are a liar. You are a deceiver. You've been defeated. I will not listen to you no more. I will not listen to your negativity. I will not listen to those words that accuse me. But now I know who I am. And I will stand firm. I stand before the presence of my father. Smelling like a new man. Dressed like a new woman. A believer in Christ Jesus. That I am redeemed. That I have been justified. That I am a saint. That is worthy to be in my father's house. So, Praise be to God. Hallelujah. I just want to say the following. You can read this in the Bible. And you can read this at home. Genesis 37, 35. Sorry, Genesis 37, 25. God sent a caravan of merchants. Para que sacaran a José del pozo donde estaba. To bring presente. Joseph out of the pit that he was placed in. Y estos mercaderes. And these merchants. No llevaban ropa. Were not carrying clothes. No llevaban comida. They were not carrying food. No llevaban otros objetos para venderlos en Egipto. They had brought no other objects to sell in Egypt. Lo que ellos llevaban en los camellos. What they were carrying in the bags of the camels' backs. Era el, los aromas, el incienso que se preparaba para los reyes. Was the aroma and incense that was prepared for kings. Mientras José iba atado. While Joseph was tied behind the camels. camellos. And the camels were walking ahead. Le estaba cayendo la unción del rey. The anointing was falling on him of a king. Tal vez tú te sientes desesperado. Maybe you find yourself that you're desperate Tal vez tú sientes que ya está perdido todo. Maybe you feel that everything has been lost. Pero Dios está enviando una caravana de ángeles. Para derramar aceite y unción sobre tu vida. Hoy vas a salir de la situación en que estás. Y Dios te va a llevar a un nuevo nivel de gloria. Dios te va a sanar. Dios va a romper las cadenas. Toda palabra de maldición. Va a ser transformada en bendición. Hoy se mueven tus cargas. Es tiempo de pararnos y alabar a Dios. Porque también la Biblia dice que cuando un leproso volvió agradecido a Jesús y lo adoró a sus pies, Jesús le dijo: Levántate, eres salvo, eres completamente sano de la letra. Dios quiere que lo alabes, Dios quiere que lo adores, Dios quiere que enseñarte que la adoración. Hay liberación, hay sanidad, hay respuesta en el nombre de Jesús. Y este es el día que el Señor ha hecho para ti y para mí. En el nombre poderoso de Jesús. Vamos a alabar al Señor. Let us praise the name of the Lord. Vamos a cantar esa alabanza ya free. And say I am free. ¿Cuántos se consideran libres en este momento? How many of you consider yourself free at this moment? Libre de enfermedad. Free of sickness. Libre de de maldiciones. Free of curses. Libre. Free. De cualquier cadena. From any chain. El enemigo te ha puesto. That the enemy has placed on you. Este es un día de bendición. Today is a day of blessing. La puerta se abrió. The doors have been opened. Vamos a adorar. Vamos a alabar al Señor. Y a cantar. I am free. Say, I am free.